Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge YouTube channel and to highlights of Paris Nice Stage 1 2021. 166 kilometer stage doing two laps around Saint Cyr Le Col. It wasn't a straightforward sprint stage, lots of rolling short climbs. The two intermediate sprints at the end of a 400 meter, 8.5% climb. And then the finish was false flat for the first 500 meters for the last K and then. 3 to 4% gradient for the last four to 500 meters. And with Sam Bennett on the start line in excellent form, I thought Trek or UAE might try and make this stage difficult for as long as possible, but no one really did. For the first lap at least, the peloton seemed content to let the sole breakaway rider Dubay for total direct energy get a gap of about six minutes and then they eventually clawed him back. The first real action was when Philip Gilbert with teammate Stefano Aldani on his wheel attacked out of the peloton with 54 k's to go. You can see on the profile that it is quite a rolly classics light course. It did cause the peloton to start to chase a little bit more aggressively and then suddenly, out of nowhere with not too much on, Richie Port was on the ground and we didn't see what had caused the crash and pretty much immediately Richie Port, probably the co-leader for Ineos, at this Paris Nice with Theo Gegenhardt looked banged up and had a sore left hip and we saw him shaking his head and then he got back on his bike then he went back to the medical car and then it was kind of a mystery what was happening for a lot of the race because we didn't see him officially abandoned we saw on the race radio Twitter that he'd crashed stopped got back on his bike stopped again and then sometime later we were notified that Richie Port had abandoned with 30 k's to go that Gilbert breakaway still had a 30 second lead on the peloton and given how this stage had been ridden not particularly hard throughout it looked like the stage was going to suit the bunch sprinters like Arno Demar and Pascal Ackerman who you can see in this group as well as obviously Sam Bennett going into the second intermediate sprint with about 15 or 16 k's to go Tej Benoit for DSM attack trying to get bonus seconds for GC I think but it was Michael Matthews who'd come second on the first intermediate sprint who won that intermediate sprint taking the three bonus seconds they had since collected the Gilbert breakaway group but this acceleration up this intermediate sprint actually sparked a few attack turns I think for Trek Segafredo as well as Cataneo for quick step and whilst the break that large 15 k's from the finish looked threatening the problem was there was a quick step rider in the break Trek rider UAE Alperson and some of them pulled for a little bit but then they ended up blocking again because they obviously had their sprinters behind Bennett, Pedersen, Christoph, Jasper Philipson so that breakaway got brought back despite the best efforts of Pierre Latour and this was going to come down to a bunch sprint. 1k to go FDJ bossing the front with three lead out men for Demar. Miles Scottson former Australian champion pulls off under the flam rouge and goes to the left hand side of the road and suddenly there's a massive crash. So how did that happen? Scottson's pulled off to the left there's this road divider on his left hand side so he can't go out further to the left and then Cockard and Laporte are fighting for Arno Demar's wheel and Laporte pretty much comes across and pushes Brian Cockard into Miles Scottson Cause the domino effect where Scottson can't go any further left. He hits the road furniture on the left and then falls into the middle of the peloton. Surprising that more riders didn't go down. Bit of an unnecessary and aggressive move from Christophe Laporte causing that crash in my view. There's nothing too much Brian Cockard could do. But anyway, the sprint continued up ahead. I think all of the sprinters that had a chance for this stage weren't too badly affected from that crash except maybe Christoph, who was unusually very far behind his UA lead out train and that meant he had no chance for this sprint finish and you know the rules by now we do the sprint finish in full speed with no cuts and then we're going to break it down in slow motion and see how it played out Arno Demar's second wheel 600 meters to go and he's only got one lead out man left so you already know that's going to be a problem they've got a right hand bend and then in the last 400 this is going to kick up to three to four percent so you don't want to go too early Sturvin starts sprinting on the right hand side but Jordi Mayus brings Ackerman up really quickly through the middle into the last 250 meters around this right hand bend and then Sam Bennett comes out of Ackerman and then Mayus slipstream to the left hand side sprinting in the hoods because sprinting in the drops is now too easy for him in world tour level competition and absolutely smokes everybody Sam Bennett Easy post up for the Dubsky on the line, beating Damar, then Pedersen. Uh, I don't even know where Ackerman came. I think Philipson nabbed fourth. But let's break it down in slow motion and see what Sam Bennett did so well in this sprint, despite having no Merku in the last kilometre. 650 metres to go. Bennett is between Jordi Mayus and Mads Pedersen. That's where his front wheel is, rather. And he's trying to hedge his bets here. If Mayus goes quicker up the left-hand side, he'll follow that. 
If Sturvin leads out hard for Pedersen on the right-hand side, he can go that way. Michael Matthews, I think, is trying to come and take Mads Pedersen's wheel. But Bennett isn't having too much of that, and he decides that Mads Pedersen's wheel is the place to be on the right-hand side. Ackerman moves back up onto Jordi May's wheel on the left-hand side. And here you see the problems begin to start for Trek Segafredo's lead-out train with Sturvin. We have a right-hand bend coming up. You know FDJ's lead-out man is going to get tired, and he's not going to be able to drop DeMar off with 200 metres to go, or even 250 metres to go. He's going to move over to the right-hand side to take this right-hand bend quickest, obviously. Also, Christophe Laporte tries to take the wheel of Arno DeMar off Jasper Sturvin. Another aggressive move from Laporte. And that's put Jasper Sturvin in this really bad spot because we've got this pretty narrow section which is about to open up with 400 metres to go. He's got Mads Pedersen on his wheel, so it looks like, okay, there's a gap here for Jasper Sturvin to move up the right-hand side. But the thing is, DeMar's lead-out man is going to move over to that right-hand side. And with DeMar then on his left and probably not wanting to go up the barrier side, that's then going to box Jesper Sturvin and Mads Pedersen in really badly. You can also see Jordi Mayers to the left-hand side. He's about to kick really hard into the open space to the left-hand side with Ackerman on his wheel. Bennett... He's got two choices right now. He can follow Mads Pedersen and Jasper Sturvin up the right-hand side, or he can switch off onto the Bora train on the left-hand side. Bennett obviously makes the really smart decision to follow Bora to the left-hand side. He looks over to his left and sees that Sturvin's not going anywhere. He's beginning to fight with Arno Demar, and I think Demar was in his rights here to actually protect his space with Jasper Sturvin coming up underneath him, trying to take the wheel of his lead-out man. Bennett moves over to the left, takes Ackerman's wheel off Brian Cockard because he's just probably got 10, 15 kilos on Brian Cockard, moves him off easily. Arno Demar with 230 meters to go. He was already sprinting into the wind. Mads Pedersen is boxed in and he there's no space for him to sprint on the right-hand side of Arno Demar's right-hand shoulder. And it was a really good lead out from Jordi Maris and Bora today. I think they dropped Ackerman off with 200, 175 meters to go. That was fine, but Ackerman just didn't have the legs today and Bennett was able to accelerate into the slipstream right here of Jordi Maris. You see it, see it better in the overhead shot and then come out of his slipstream with maybe 150, 125 meters to go and it was a wrap. The minute he came out of Mayo's slipstream, he'd already accelerated past Damar who'd been sprinting into the wind on his own for already 100 meters and Maz Pedersen had to stop his sprint and was only able to start sprinting with like 75 meters to go in clear air. Imperious from Sam Bennett, surfing wheels and doing it himself without Merku in the last kilometre. Yeah, Ackerman got a better lead out today, but just didn't have it. So worrying signs for Bora and Ackerman. Sam Bennett obviously coming first on the stage. Arno DeMar holding on to second somehow. I thought Pedersen actually pipped him on the line. Jasper Phillips in fourth. He came out of nowhere to take fourth. Cockard fifth, Ackerman sixth, Bauhaus seventh, Laporte eighth, and Greipel and Barbier, both on Israel Startup Nation, ninth and tenth. Tomorrow's stage is 188 Ks, finishing in Amelie. There's not too much wind predicted. So that means it should be Sam Bennett time once again. He's the heavy favourite for the stage. I think we'll see a more dominant quick step lead out for him tomorrow because there's two right-hand corners which you need to be in really good position in to contest this sprint finish. But if you want to know why I wear these sunglasses in these videos, it's to hide my tears when Richie Port crashes out of a stage race. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Goodbye.